This video will serve as an introduction to a semester long course on physical chemistry focused specifically on quantum mechanics and spectroscopy. So I've already done a previous video that introduced physical chemistry as a field. And I'll probably link to that video here. Uh, but basically, physical chemistry is the, you know, physics behind chemistry, right? It's it's looking at the physical models and the mathematical models that drive chemistry. And part of that is quantum mechanics. So with, the, with this video, I just want to introduce what quantum mechanics is and give you an overlay of what this course will contain. So first, what is quantum mechanics? So quantum mechanics is the physics concerned with really small particles, subatomic particles on a really small length scale. So by small length scale, we're talking about like 10 to the minus 10 meters, right? So there's a really small subatomic length scale, right? So this is in contrast to the classical mechanics that you've probably learned before, right? So classical mechanics, when I say classical mechanics, I'm talking about just the general physics that you've probably learned in any college level introductory physics course, right? So this is, you know, anything dealing with Newton's F equals MA equation, right? So whether you knew it or not, everything you were doing in classical mechanics could be boiled down to F equals MA, right? Force is equal to mass times acceleration. In that class, you probably would draw what's known as a free body diagram, label out the different forces that are acting on an object and try to predict its motion using this equation, right? Well, what happens when you try to apply classical mechanics to really small particles on this subatomic length scale is that it actually doesn't work, right? Or at least it doesn't work as well as it does for larger uh, objects, right? So when we get on the subatomic length scale, we actually need a new branch of physics, brand new physics that can describe uh, particles that are moving really quickly and are at this really small length scale. And that's where quantum mechanics comes in, right? Quantum mechanics is built from the ground up to be able to handle the properties and describe the energies of very small particles. Now, I want to, now that you kind of know what quantum mechanics is, I want to motivate why this would be important for a chemist to understand, right? And so to do that, I wanna look back at a little bit of organic chemistry, right? A lot of you have probably spent a year, or at least a semester of organic chemistry, right? So let's look at a really simple reaction, right? So let's look at a simple SN2 reaction where we have a bromine anion interacting with methyl chloride. Right. So um, so if you remember these types of substitution reactions, you know exactly what's going to happen here. You know that an electron pair from bromine is going to attack this central carbon. Right. So we'll have this electron pair interacting with the carbon that's going to break this bond between carbon and chlorine. And then what do you end up with? You end up with instead of methyl chloride. Now you have methyl bromide and you have a chlorine anion, right? So think about what makes this reaction tick, right? What makes it tick, what makes it go is this transfer of an electron pair, right? A transfer of an electron pair from the anion to the carbon, right? So this is really what makes chemistry tick on a larger scale. Right. All of this stuff that's happening at the subatomic level, electron pairs being shared and donated. Right. Um, atoms being moved, bonds being broken and formed. This is stuff that's happening on a really small subatomic scale. And you really need quantum mechanics to be able to understand this on any deep level level, right? So you were able to make it through organic chemistry just fine, knowing how to push arrows, knowing what's going to happen. You have a lot of predictive power with this type of um, notation, right? But to really understand it on a really deep level, that's where quantum mechanics comes in, right? So that you understand the energies, the motion of electrons and atoms and molecules um, that can only be accurately described by this new physics. Another thing that I really wanted to kind of drive home about quantum mechanics is how relatively new it is. So most of the developments, the key developments in the theory of quantum mechanics 
mostly occurred between like 1910 to about 1930. Right, this was really the the hot period when quantum mechanics was first really being theorized and and coming into the age of as a mature field. Right now, you might be thinking, well, yeah, at this point, that's a hundred years ago. That's still a long time from now, right? But um, relatively speaking, this is really a new field compared to the other things that you may have learned at an introductory level. Think about calculus, right? The, the modern calculus was all developed in the 1700s, you know, mid to late 1700s. The stuff we learned in the previous course, thermodynamics, most of that stuff was developed in the 1800s. So yes, this 1910 to 1930 range is a long time ago, but relatively speaking, um, this was this is relatively new compared to a lot of the other things that you might study in a chemistry or physics curriculum. Right. So this was what really one of the things that excited me about first learning quantum mechanics. I'm just looking at the years and I'm like, this stuff is relatively new compared to calculus and thermo and, you know, old school classical mechanics. Right. So um, so that's one of the things I really love about this It's relatively new. And the developments of quantum mechanics have a really brand new application um, in something called quantum computing. Uh, which we won't talk about in this class. It's really outside of the scope of this course. But this is something that you've probably heard. And if anything from this course, I hope you have a better understanding of the basics of quantum mechanics so you can understand what's going on with, uh, with quantum computing and other common modern applications of quantum mechanics that are still revolutionizing fields to this day. OK, so an overview of how this class is going to go. Um, there are going to be 13 total units, right? So there are going to be 13 units total. And you can basically split up the units into these four thematic blocks that I've put down here. The first place where we're going to start is the, is the foundations of quantum mechanics. So before we can start using it and talk about any, talking about it in any detail, we have to establish the foundations of what this field is. And it really hinges on this equation right here. This is called Schrodinger's equation. So Schrodinger equation. And this is the equation that governs all of quantum mechanics, just like F equals MA governs all of classical mechanics, H psi equals E psi governs all of quantum mechanics. And this H is known as the Hamiltonian, psi is the wave function, and E is the total energy of your system. Now, we'll, of course, go into more detail in these first three units of what each of these components are, but this is the equation that governs quantum mechanics all of quantum mechanics. And, and this is what's going to be covered in the first three units. So units one, two, and three are going to establish the foundation. Then we're going to move on to some foundational models of quantum mechanics. We're going to use Schrodinger's equation in order to build up these models of the motion and the energy of uh, subatomic particles, of really small particles. So some of these models I've sketched out two here. Uh, one is a particle in a box which is a model of translational motion of particles and a harmonic oscillator, which is a model of the vibrational motion of particles. We're going to cover about four of these key models, models, a particle in a box, harmonic oscillator, uh, rigid rotor and the hydrogen atom. And those will be covered in units four through seven. Now, in unit three, we'll move on to something called spectroscopy. And spectroscopy is just um, basically looking at the interaction of light and matter and the spectra that they produce, right? So if you uh, shine light on a molecule and you hook it up to some, you know, you hook it up to some spectrometer, some device, it'll give you a spectrum that looks something like this that I've drawn here, right? And on the x-axis, this is the wavelength. And this y-axis is just the intensity of the radiation with the molecule. And you'll get some uh, spectrum. And to the untrained eye, these spectra can really just look like squiggly lines. So my goal in this unit, uh, these units, um, is to make sure that you understand how these spectra look, their structure, and so that you can actually interpret something about the atomic or molecular structure uh, from looking at these types of spectra. And that they don't, they don't just look like squiggly lines to you, that you can be a more sophisticated interpreter of spectra. Right? And that's covered in units eight and nine. 
And then the last focus of the class is going to focus on bonding models and computational chemistry. Now, one of these bonding models you already learned in general chemistry called molecular orbital theory, right, where you would have, you know, the overlap of two 1s orbitals that come together and form a sigma orbital. All of that stuff comes from the foundations of quantum mechanics. It comes from the wave functions of molecular systems. And so we're going to look at the quantum foundations of bonding models like molecular orbital theory. There's another one called valence bond theory as well that we'll also learn about. And those models, act, especially MO theory, guides uh, a field called computational chemistry where, uh, where computational models are used to predict different properties of atoms and molecules. So we'll spend the last half of the class really looking at um, these bonding models and how they drive computational models for atoms and molecules. So these are really the four grand themes of this course and uh, all the units fall under these different themes. So, um, so if this is interesting to you or if you're in the class, then, um, then hopefully this gives you a good overlay of what we're gonna learn this semester um, what will be covered in the units for this course.